Okay, so we're gonna do carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. I like to divide it up like that because the enzymes are significantly different across the three. Now, the food we put in our mouth is a mixture of all these things. You guys know that, you can read the labels on the side, right? So most things are a mix. Our main sources of carbohydrates, starches are the big one by the long shot, okay? Starches are what plants make and they are the cornerstone of our nutrition, right? They are the principal carbohydrate. We get some sucrose, okay? That's processed sugar. Um, particularly in this country, we get a fair bit of this. If, you're, if you use any milk products, you get some lactose. If you are a baby who is um, feeding entirely off milk, this is your primary carbohydrate, is lactose, because there's very little starch in, in breast milk or in formula. All right, so those are the sources. Now, there's another huge one, which is cellulose. Pound for pound and gallon for gallon, there's more cellulose on planet Earth than any other carbohydrate, because that's all the cell walls, that's all of the trees, that's all of the plant matter. Now, the problem is we don't have the enzymes to digest cellulose. It's too bad we don't because like we would have no problems with global hunger anymore, but we don't, right? Very few animals do. In fact, most of the cellulose on Earth is actually digested by bacteria that live in the intestines of some other animal, right? So like um, cows, termites, the, the way they process cellulose is they have a, they've made bacteria friends who, who do the first part for them, okay? So in us, cellulose becomes dietary fiber, right? Which means it passes through relatively chemically unchanged. Now you're gonna learn in clinical medicine, fiber is actually a really important part of digestive health and it's an important part of our diet. So one of the things that humans have learned is just because we don't directly use a thing, it doesn't mean that it's useless in our diet, right? Without fiber, we have a bunch of uh, increased risks for GI problems, cancer among them, okay? So cellulose or fiber as we like to call it in medicine. All right, so what are the enzymes that are participating in this top line? Starches, sucrose, and lactose. Talin we talked about yesterday, okay? So talin, um, it's an alpha amylase. Amylase is the fancy term for starch digester. Um, the alphas and betas, honestly, I don't really know. It has something to do with how they work and what kind of starches they work on. But if I don't know, I'm not going to expect you to know, right? So alpha amylase um, from the mouth. So it turns starches into maltose. Maltose is a disaccharide. Um, <coughs> and... Uh, it will be further broken down into its individual sugars uh, at the brush border, okay? Talin's activity stops once you swallow because the pH in the stomach is so low that talin is denatured, okay? So talin's only action is in the mouth. This is also true of um, lingual lipase, which we'll talk about in a little bit, that it too is turned off by the stomach acid. Okay, so that's tailing from the top. The next carbohydrate digesting step is the pancreas. So there's a big missing organ there, that's the stomach. The stomach does not participate in carbohydrate digestion at all. Interestingly, even the acid in the stomach doesn't have a huge effect on carbohydrate, right? So um, <clears throat> the, uh, we pass through the stomach then we add the major, the, the heavy hitter, which is the pancreatic amylase, all right? So it's gonna turn starch into maltose and or glucose, depending on the nature of the starch. It's potent and active. So within 15 to 30 minutes, all the carbohydrates it can reach are digested. So this doesn't mean that in 30 minutes, all the carbohydrates you ate are digested. Right, because this enzyme can only get to material that's in the first part of the intestine. Okay, so that's the limiting factor is how long it has with it. But if you take carbohydrate in a beaker and you add alpha amylase, it digests practically um, uh, immediately. All right, so it's very potent. 
Now, we haven't gotten down to monomer yet because, well, glucose is a monomer, but maltose is a disaccharide. It's a glucose glucose. So we need another enzyme to go from disaccharide to monosaccharide. Those are found um, in or on top of, in other words, on the brush border, of the small intestinal epithelial cells, of the, um, what I call the brush border cells. And let me just explain what that term means. We call it the brush border because when you look at it under the microscope, it looks like this, right? That's a cell, 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 right? So this part looks like a brush, right? So we call it the brush border. <coughs> These are microvilli, okay, just to orient you. Um, <clears throat> don't confuse microvilli and villi. Villi is something you can barely see with your eyes, right? The villi are the little carpet, the little tufts of carpet on the inside of the GI tract. The microvilli you can't see with your eyes. This is microscopic, okay? All right, so the uh, lactase, sucrase, maltase, and alpha dextrinase, those are all disaccharide to monosaccharide enzymes. Okay, and they are either in or on these, these brush border cells. So the final products of carbohydrate digestion are simple sugars, glucose, galactose, and fructose. And you, you probably remember these three names either from organic chemistry or from biochemistry, right? Because these are the classic sugars. We can combine them in different ways, but those are the, that's where it all begins. Most of our diet breaks down into glucose. Now, um, glucose, I, I'll talk quite a bit about glucose after the test, but um, glucose is our preferred carbohydrate. It's the cellularly preferred carbohydrate, right? It offers the cells the most flexibility. Um, so that's what we get out of it. <clears throat> and that carbohydrate then can, becomes part of our nutrient pool, okay? So, in the end, what comes into the blood from the GI tract is glucose, galactose, and fructose, right? After we've done our digestion. So if we look at that in a, in a picture, right? Starches, talin from saliva, pancreatic amylase from um, the pancreas. You can see approximate proportions, right? This is the, the bigger player than talin is. That gets us to maltose and small glucose polymers. And then we go um, to the uh, uh, disaccharidases, right? Maltase and alpha dextrinase gets us to glucose, galactose, and fructose, okay? Um, I promise you I will not ask you like, well, which are the two sugars in lactose or which are the two sugars in sucrose? Because frankly, I have a hard time remembering that myself. So I won't ask you that. All, I think of these as disaccharide, disaccharide. I don't really care what it's made of. I just know it's a disaccharide. It's going to get broken up, and then the monosaccharide is going to get absorbed. Okay. In our metabolism, glucose, galactose, and fructose can be freely interchanged with one another. Okay. We have to spend a little energy to use galactose and fructose, but glucose we don't. 